Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Evolving Man podcast. This one is a special one. I sit down with my wife, Shalina Ayana, for the first time in at least a year. Certainly the first time since we've had our little girl. She's 10 months old now, and taking an hour and 15 minutes away was quite the project, but we managed to do it, and I'm happy with what came out of it, and I think you're going to enjoy this conversation. We talk about marriage and how marriage and relationship can be challenged uh, when a child comes into the picture. We talk about a shocking statistic of how many relationships break down in that first year after a child comes along. And we also talk about our own relationship, some of the struggles that we've had and some of the ways that we've figured out how to move through those struggles, some of the tools that we use. And we talk about relationships in general, romantic relationships in general, and some of the clients that Shalina sees and what they're struggling with, what patterns come up for them, and what a lot of the clients that I work with also struggle with. Shalina works with women. She runs a program for relationship anxiety and anxious attachment. I run a program for men where we train men on relationship tools, no matter how uh, those men are showing up in relationship. And so we sort of compare notes and sit down and uh, we have some interesting insights that come about. So this is the second part to that interview. The first part is on Shalina's channel on Rising Woman and you can check that out and I'm going to do my best to link that everywhere and make sure it pops up at the end of this uh, video. And if you like what you hear here, Please share it with somebody and uh, enjoy. So let's talk. Yeah, so maximizers. Maximizers um, end up being so often by having a caregiver, a primary caregiver who was inconsistently available. Yeah, like hot and cold or, yeah. you know, they're one moment, they're not, or very unpredictable, yeah. right? Yes. which is my experience. Mm-hmm. You know. So there's this sense of abandonment and feeling mm-hmm. like th- the person wasn't there for them. And maybe yeah. they were actually abandoned or maybe they were yeah. emotionally abandoned. Yeah. Or in my case, both. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think the uh, the reality, like the cold hard facts of the situation don't matter as much as the child's experience. No, totally. Because like, I honestly... I could say that I was emotionally abandoned by my mother, Mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, that wasn't necessarily my primary need. Yeah. Um, My primary need was to feel accepted and loved for my full expression of who I was. Yes. And that was not a thing in your home at all. Mm -hmm. And my brother also contributed to that because he was like, no to you. Just no. Like you, you getting energy? No. Yeah. And so he would like, try to put out my fire all the time yeah. as well. Yeah. So I end up being a minimizer, just pulling all my energy into my bedroom, into myself, yeah. away from other people and um, being ultra independent, mm-hmm. hyper independent mm-hmm. in relationship. Yeah. Still maximizers. On <laughs> still working on that one. And maximizers end up sort of chasing that unmet need mm-hmm. yeah. in romantic relationships. Being more explosive, being more external, being more expressive, having a lot more complaints. And one of the things that I work with people on in freedom from relationship anxiety is recognizing when love is coming towards them and they're actually pushing it away unconsciously. Right. Because that's actually one of the signatures of maximizers is they're so focused on what's wrong that they actually don't see any of the good stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's a co-creation, right? I brought that up earlier. Yeah. We actually co-create the problems in our relationship. And this is a perfect example of Mm -hmm. that is like actually love's coming towards you, but you don't see it. You stir up Mm -hmm. a storm that then ends up pushing your partner away. And as a, as a minimizer or an, or an avoidant, I have experienced that many times where I'm like, I'm doing all these things Mm -hmm. at least in large part Mm -hmm. for you yeah, or for this relationship. And I've like, I can count on, two hands the number of things I did for the relationship today in Mm -hmm. one way or another Mm -hmm. and I'm receiving this complaint and I just want to leave yeah totally. I I just want to I don't want to give you any energy I don't want to lean in Mm -hmm. and be like oh like tell me more Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but that's the difference, right? Is when you're in this mode of doing versus being or mm. doing versus feeling. And that emotional climate, that emotional presence in the relationship is so, so important. Yeah. And that's the thing that people struggle with most. Even we struggle with that because it's not your default mode. To, it's not to my... consider it as beneficial. Yes, it's not. That's not my primary way of... Yeah, trying to solve problems or yeah. or or get to the root of the issue and and get past it, mm-hmm. it, it like sitting and and being in the emotion of it. Mm-hmm. And there have certainly been a few times in our relationship where I'm like, I'm feeling stuck, like I can't solve this problem. Yeah, with us, and I try something different on the advice of someone. <laughs> There's a ghost in here. I try something different on the advice of, of someone wise mm-hmm. or just knowing a tool and I just suspend all judgment and I just sit and listen and get curious mm-hmm. about your experience and try to reflect that back to you mm-hmm. and try to feel into what it's like to be you and to empathize and to share like how I want some of the same things that you want and how can we get there. And all of a sudden you change in yeah. front of my eyes yeah. and I go, whoa. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought if I did this with her that she would just make it more about me and then I would have more problems. Mm-hmm. But here there's a reversal occurring and I see that happen to my clients all the time. They're like, man, guys, I went into the same pattern with my partner that I've run a hundred times, a thousand times. And I tried this thing and all of a sudden she was different. And then I realized, have I been doing, have I been creating this mm-hmm. myself the whole time? <laughs> right yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah cuz like when you change the relationship changes mm-hmm. around you yeah totally and especially i mean everybody has their own you know inner ways of processing emotion and some people are just more emotional than others i'm much more in my feeling senses and um in in the being and you're a lot more in the doing mm-hmm. and Often what I need most from you is not the doing, it's the being. But we even ran into this, you know, months ago, I don't know how long ago, where I actually shifted into a lot more acts of service because I didn't have as much to give you emotionally or sexually or physically. And so I started just not waking you up in the morning to give you more time to sleep. And I was exhausted and I was doing all of these things to try to show you love and it just wasn't landing Mm -hmm. because that's not your main mode of receiving love. And I was like devastated. I was like, I've been doing all of this stuff and you haven't been receiving it. But it's the exact same thing in, in reverse, right? And often what we need most is just to really feel like our partner gets us and to feel like our partner cares and that our partner wants to be with us as a team and actually work things out. And I know that in our relationship, when I feel the most triggered is when I feel like we're not on the same page as a team. When I feel this, it's that uh, urge that you have sometimes to poke or to, you know, oppose me and for for you sometimes it's fun and playful because i think that's how your family system grew up with like there was a lot of opposing even now like there's this like us against them type dynamic in your family that i witness sometimes Mm -hmm. and so but for me that doesn't feel good because that's not that's not what i want if i think for you it feels kind of normal and um and so yeah it's just this this relearning or learning for the first time really for both of us how to actually just be on the same page be a team when both of us really we learned to fight and to defend all the time like I also never really learned how to be in a healthy relationship or how to just be a team or how to compromise like it took me years in our marriage to learn that when you didn't agree with something that I wanted to do in the house and I wanted to bulldoze through and like get my way and I felt controlled that actually I was also controlling. And when I started Mm -hmm. to loosen my grip and just wait, I would realize a lot of times your feedback was great and it made things better. And so then I loosened my grip and then we started working together and then we really started building a home and now we have this whole land project that we never could have done years ago when we were still in that you know and 
And so it, it takes a long time to develop those skills. And I yep. feel like we're still learning, yep. but without those tools, we would not be together. Yep. And in the last year, if we didn't have the tools, if we hadn't spent all of our relationship working on our relationship, going to workshops, studying, doing all of the trainings, we wouldn't have made it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes a lot to build a good team. It takes a lot to build a good team. Mm -hmm. And that's our job, right? Is to be a good team yeah. in this home and for yeah. this family and to figure out how to work well together. Yeah. And yeah, this piece around, um, acts of service, like we both shifted into that because it's just, it's due time. Yeah. It's time to do, you yeah. know, when you got a baby and you got diapers and you got groceries and like land and all the things it's it, for both of us it's do, 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 do. Yeah. There's barely any time for self, especially on your part. And so we both end up loving each other via acts of service. Yeah. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the complaint from parents, even long before I was a parent, but like they're both feeling like they do so much mm -hmm. for the other person, for the family, for the household, and that they're not appreciated Yeah, because that's the mode they're in. Like I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, but mm -hmm. there's not this recognition that like, oh, what I actually need is a little bit of words. Yeah. And a presence, little bit of touch, a little bit of presence. Understanding yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. Cause like here we both were yeah. giving acts of service, but neither of us actually really respond mm -hmm. that well to acts of service. Like mm -hmm. we appreciate that things are getting done, but we both need some words. Yeah. And I some mean, touch. We're, we're, we both need that. Right? Both of us are words and touch. That said, I felt really guilty a lot because I felt like my needs weren't getting met and I was craving things, but I also felt guilty sometimes for even bringing it up because I saw how much you were doing. I was like, yeah. he's making all of the food. He's doing all of the dishes. He's cleaning the kitchen every night. You know, I'm in bed for two hours while he's cleaning the house and he's going out and taking care of all of the land work that I can't do right now because I have a baby on me 24 mm -hmm. seven. He's going all the groceries and, you know, and so then I'm like, how can I complain? You know, and I just felt bad, but I just, I needed something else from you yeah. and and i still you know i still feel like the thing that we are working on more is having that emotional depth that we both want in our relationship yeah. and that'll be like a forever work in progress for us like that's why we you know schedule at time and we we do our practices and we do our clearings and our dates but like you know the simple thing that we used to do that we are going to start again is the great grateful practice where you know before bed we would say three things that i'm grateful for that you did today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's a way when you don't have a lot of time to acknowledge what your partner did and help them feel seen and also have them hear praise like end on a high note yep. <laughs> every it's day tiny that's a very tiny practice that i think people don't realize how big of a difference it would make it makes a huge difference when we're doing that, I feel that our emotional climate in the relationship totally shifts. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why we don't just always do that. Like we should probably just be doing that every single day. Always. Well, <laughs> I think it's probably, it's worth noting and Harville and Helen do a lot of teaching on this, yeah. that, that humans tend towards negativity. Yeah. Because it, evolutionarily or what have you, it's more important for, for us to focus on the negative because mm -hmm. we could lose a partner we could lose we it's could get survival. kicked out of the village we could yeah. get killed if we don't keep our eyes on those things mm -hmm. but in relationship that actually just it it brews and creates more negativity and so we actually need to fight against that yeah. and, and uh, spend more time choosing i was telling the guys in my freedom from addiction circle last night that i've had this experience on some psychedelic journeys where I feel like I'm walking along a mountain with with where I'm at in my mind. And at any given moment, I can go the direction of fear and, oh my God, I'm not okay. Or, you know, this dark thought or that dark thought, anxiety, insecurity, whatever. And I go careening down that side of the mountain. But I'm always kind of also on that ridge and I can choose at any given moment to go the other side. And as soon as I do, when, when I'm in a psychedelic journey, it's like... <laughs> all of a sudden it flowers into rainbows and light and I'm like, Oh wow. Like love changes, gratitude, 
accepting what is in the moment and, and being thankful for whatever experience I'm being given right now, boom, I'm down that other side of the mountain mm-hmm. and everything flowers and changes from there. And I think what a lot of us don't realize is that we're walking that ridge line every second of every day. Yeah. And w- most of the time we're unconsciously choosing which direction we're going. And all it takes is a little bit of consciously choosing where you're going, not from a place of trying to spiritually bypass or being fake, mm-hmm. but like truly counting your blessings, mm-hmm. truly telling your partner what you love about them, mm-hmm. truly telling your friends what you love about them. Mm-hmm. Hey man, here's this, here's something I really appreciate about you. Yeah. And I was with this group of guys last night saying like the guys were all talking about how they've started doing that recently and how it's changed their whole lives. Yeah, if you don't water your plants, they die and that's, we're plants. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this is, this is, and, and we were like, why, I mean, one of the guys who was saying this, he's 40. He's like, why am I just learning this now? Yeah. Why am I just learning this now? I don't crazy know. crazy that we don't have this in schools <laughs> and that you, like you said, you will we'll spend $200,000 to, for our wedding, but mm-hmm. we won't go to therapy before we are like six years into a problem and we'll think that relationships should just be easy mm-hmm. when it's like really, they're the most difficult skill you could ever have. It's like you wouldn't go scuba diving without getting certified, but you'll get married with no therapy and Make a baby. and no workshops, no trainings, yeah. no containers. Yeah. Then you're going to have an actual human being yeah. that you're fully responsible for or many human beings yeah. and you're not going to pay for help for that. Like yeah. that's wild to me. It's wild. Yeah. Can't believe you it. and I are on the same page because we're in the personal growth uh, field. And I think I feel like once you break into it, you're like, oh, Mm-hmm. you know you realize so that's why we're here speaking that message to the world because the barrier to entry actually is pretty low you just need a certain level of willingness to like an acknowledgement like okay i don't know everything there are people out there who who have these tools and i can go learn them and i can go practice them yeah with people and for me the group container is just magical mm-hmm. i was doing a lot of one-on-one coaching for years uh through evolving man and once I formed these group containers, I was like, I'm not taking new one-on-one coaching clients because we're all coaching each other in this group container and yeah. everybody's getting something out of this one guy who's at the front speaking his problem mm-hmm. and, and getting feedback. Like we're all learning from him all at the same time. And you get 10 guys that leave the call after two hours and everyone feels like they've been coached. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's learning and growing together. So, um, that's the way. Yeah, the I, way. I agree. I, I mean, I haven't done one-on-one for, you know, I don't know, six years, five years or something, but there's just something really magic about creating that collective field. Mm-hmm. And I have found that when I'm working with groups, I really start to connect with people psychically too, and, and really feel the energy of the group. And um, people just get their questions answered. They don't even have to ask them because mm-hmm. the truth is, is that even though it might look differently, we're all kind of dealing with the same stuff. Yeah. Like we're not that different. It's very common to feel like the thing that you're dealing with is so unique. And like when you bring that to the table, the teacher or the person facilitating is going to be like, yeah, I I've never seen that problem before. Yeah. <laughs> but it's or like, people are going to be judging you. Yeah. They're all going to be breathing sighs of relief. They're going to be like, oh, yeah. thank God other people are dealing with this. Yeah. It's uh, inevitably that is so common, that experience yeah. where people come in thinking like, oh yeah, like I'm so, I'm broken. This is such a unique problem. It's unsolvable. And they come in and there's like a bunch of people putting their hands up being like, yeah. I'm there right now, or I've just been there, Yeah, you know, and the person facilitating is like, yeah, that's actually a pretty common problem. We actually have a name for it and we've got a tool to help you get out of this thing, you know? Well, that's the thing is so many of these issues are solvable and so many of the problems that we experience in relationship are never going to be solved. What is it that the Gottman said? It's like 80% of your fights are never going to be resolved because we're fighting about the same thing. Like they're like legacy issues or unsolvable problems. Like one person's messy and the other person wants to be clean. Yeah. You know, like, the, and yeah. there's like fundamental issues between you and I where, you know, we're just very different in certain ways. And there are certain things that are just always going to irk us and we could fight about it forever or we could learn how to navigate it with grace. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've had to learn how to do. Yeah. But the idea that you should break up or get a divorce 
like you're going to just find somebody else with another problem. So I always tell people it's not about having problems. It's about deciding which problems you're down to have for the rest of your life. Yeah. Because you're always going to have, there's always going to be some big thing in your marriage or in your long-term relationship that doesn't work the way you wish it would. There's for always sure. going to be one thing that's not quite perfect. What's the thing that you can live with? Mm -hmm. That's what you have to decide. And yeah. is this the person that you want to do the work with? for the rest of your life. Yeah. And it will probably be multiple things really. Yeah. Like one of the things that I know that you and I are going to deal with as long as we are parents is that you are more risk adverse and yes. I am more prone to taking risks yeah. with our child. Totally. And we will, we're probably going to have plenty of conflict around it where like mm -hmm. I'm willing to do things with her that are scary yeah. and that are more likely to get her hurt. Right. Yeah. And, and I, um, I experience you in those moments as the controlling mother, yeah, right, trying to like put limitations on me mm -hmm. and my relationship with my daughter, yeah. And so, learning how to have those conversations without projecting mom onto you—you yeah. <laughs> you are literally mom, but yeah. my mom, exactly, right. Um, and acknowledging that like we're not going to see things the same, no. And I can't convince you to like just totally take my perspectives. It's not possible. Yeah. So how do we? reconcile that and still be in relationship and in good relation with well and the thing is is right. that i don't actually need you to change i mean sometimes there's things where i'm like hey i've actually researched this this isn't safe like for real you can't do that and you and sometimes you're like okay great you know um and then there's other times where i'm just really expressing my fear and my anxiety that you couldn't possibly understand because for sure. i I'm having a completely different experience from you. And yep. as a mother, I can't begin to tell you the amount of heartbreak I experience on a daily basis, just knowing that I, every single day I'm having to let her go a little more. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to be the anxious mother who's controlling everything and, and making her afraid to do things because I'm projecting onto her or like stopping her from having life experiences. That's mm -hmm. not my goal. But when I'm telling you, how I'm feeling or if I'm expressing anxiety, I don't necessarily need you to change what you're going to do, but I do need empathy and I need more compassion mm -hmm. instead of dismissiveness. Like if you were to minimize me in those moments, I feel more frustrated. I feel more scared. I feel upset. And then I feel mad at you because I'm like, he's not on my team versus I know that this is scary. I've got this. Yeah. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. You know, I'm, I know my limits. I'm going to protect her. Yeah. And I know you love her and yeah. I love her too. You yeah. know, like there's a difference. It's not about being dominated or it's not about always conceding with your partner, but it's about how we bring our disagreements and we can hold a boundary and still not change when they're expressing that they don't like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But if we do it in a fuck you way versus an I love you way, it's going to have a completely different result. Yeah. And that's the being versus doing again, right? It's like, it's all in the energy. Hardest thing for me to give you, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. Nick always says this, the thing your partner needs the most is probably the hardest thing for you to give them yeah. in the in that moment. Well, and you, it, I mean, you never got that in in your family system. I was never I. shown how to do that. Yeah. yeah, and so it it is easier for me to just fight you or be yeah. combative in those moments and yeah. give you give you a fuck you back. Yeah, uh, not back. <laughs> just throw a fuck you at you yeah. when you're sharing your fear and your anxiety with mm -hmm. me because the language of the heart wasn't wasn't really modeled, and so that's yeah. what I'm having to learn. That's what yeah. I'm having to, to, to learn to interrupt that pattern, to hear you and proceed as I'm going to proceed while, mm -hmm. while, yeah, while hearing you. Yeah. And right. it's just, you know, it's like, there's a gentleness yeah. that I always crave. And, uh, I know that's hard for you. Right. And then yeah. when you don't give it to me, I bring my fighter out because that's how I learned how to survive my wild childhood <laughs> And we're you in know. the power struggle again. Yeah, we I go. know. And it's like so funny because we just were in such a great place before. And now we're just starting, not again, but we're we're starting over with some of the things that we have to readdress because mm -hmm. the stakes are higher now. Yeah. Like, whereas maybe we had just grown tolerant and more compassionate with one another. Like we knew each other's patterns. I was able to, you know, sometimes get smacked by your ego a little bit and be able to just kind of brush it off and be like, whatever, you know, it's just his style. And, um, I'm not going to, you know, ride him for every little 
mm-hmm. thing. But now we have a child who's watching and yeah. I want so badly for her to grow up in an environment where she's got a healthy model of love. And so I'm much more intolerant and impatient with some of those things because yep. there's somebody watching us yep. and learning and that's just so important. And so that's why we're still doing this work. <laughs> that's, why we're, that's why we're going to therapy. And it, that's just our invitation to level up, you know, yeah. it's because your intolerance and your impatience is hard for me because I interpret it as my controlling mother again and yeah. you're trying to change me and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, catastrophizing the relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and so I have to learn to hold my center and hold your emotions and your experience and mm-hmm. hear you and, and, uh, should be better. And I think yeah. people reali- don't realize yeah. sometimes there's a difference. You know, when someone asks you to change something, I'm not asking you to change who you are. I'm asking you to change how you show up. And when you ask for something from me, you're asking me to shift the way that I say something or the tone that I bring or the energy that I'm bringing. You're not saying, hey, who you are as a person doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and but so often when our partner asks us to change something, we get our our backs up and we think, oh, you, you don't accept me for who I am. Well, no, I accept you for who you are, but I can't accept this behavior. This doesn't mm-hmm. work for me and I mm-hmm. can't live with this. And so that's the other thing that comes up a lot with in all relationships is being able to put our egos down and be able to breathe through the discomfort and the mm. pride or mm. the internalized shame or whatever it is that's arising when we're like, oh, I'm, I'm a shitty person. Nope, that's not what's happening. Yeah. Your partner's inviting you to step more into your heart. Yeah. And that's always a good thing. And if you both want that for each other, then it just becomes this mutual evolution. Like I always see your heart and I see what an amazing human being you are and how much you do for your community, the way that your work impacts so many men. I meet these men. I've had men pull me aside hundreds of times and tell me how your work helped them save their marriages or that saved their lives and how much they love you and respect you. And so, you know, I see all of that. And so when I'm inviting a change, it's not, me wanting you to be a different Mm -hmm. person Mm -hmm. it's me actually knowing who you are underneath it all underneath some of those defense mechanisms and i'm like i want that Mm -hmm. you know i want your true essence yeah my job is to trust that yeah because anytime you're asking me for something i feel like i'm being given the report card that said if only ben would live up to his potential (laughs) right stop acting out in the classroom yeah well, and you also had behavior contracts all the time, All right? the time. Yeah. Like your mom would give you contracts that you had to sign that if you didn't, you know, if you didn't behave a certain way, then what would happen? Things would get taken away from you yeah. or... Yeah, I'd be punished. Yeah. 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 So like, of course, you know, that's internalized. Yeah. yeah. So I have to trust that like you, you, if you don't want to control me, that you want the best for me, that you see, you see a part of me that, that perhaps I can't see. Mm-hmm. And, um the more I can lean into that while still holding, you know, my own feelings and being able to own all that stuff uh, and share them with you. Um, we end up in a better place. Yeah, totally. You know, so this is probably a good place to wrap up. Just mm-hmm. knowing that uh, we've been away from our baby for an hour and eight minutes, wow, folks. Look at this us is go. amazing. Right? Hour and eight minutes. This is this is probably the fourth time She's since she's partying was downstairs born. to Rafi with with, <laughs> with Jasmine. I think it's worth pointing out that uh, since the last time we talked, you had released "Becoming the One." Yeah. But somehow, amidst all of this, folks, <laughs> the the baby creating and the family creating, Shalina wrote and created a journal, a guided journal that goes with the book becoming the one yeah it is and it's available for pre-order right yeah, now yeah right? and it's launching uh it'll be in bookstores and available on amazon september 19th so i don't know when this podcast is going to go live but it's coming up soon yeah i wrote it while i was pregnant and then we designed it um even actually while ray was just a few months old and it's so beautiful it's beautiful yeah i love it yeah yeah as always, thank you for creating what you create in the world and for being an inspiration for people and just being the thing I think I love. Ugh, God, there's too many things I love about <laughs> you, but 
But one of the things I love the most about you is that you're just so honest, brass tacks, matter of fact, no bullshit mm. kind of person. <laughs> some people love that. Some people hate it. <laughs> yeah, some people hate it. But man, that's my kind of person. Yeah, you know, me too. like a, a person who can really see the, the the reality of being human, the light and the dark side. Yeah. And accept both of those those sides in other people and in themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that's what you do. Yeah. And you you bring that essence to your book and to this journal mm-hmm. in guiding people to see that for themselves. Mm-hmm. And that in itself is healing. We are all our own healers. Mm-hmm. You can go see a coach or a therapist or a counselor or go see a shaman. But in the end, you are interacting with the medicine that that person carries and you are your own healer. Yeah. And that's what you're taking people through here. You're mm-hmm. like, hey, here's a bunch of questions and exercise you can go through like heal yourself yeah and tools a lot of it is about connecting with nature Mm -hmm. to different visualizations and rituals because i mean ultimately you know we are nature and we've forgotten that and so reconnecting to that and finding ways to get into our bodies and reclaim our essence is so so important and so that's why i created this journal Mm -hmm. and uh, i'm excited for it to be out into the world and uh yeah to see how people respond to it but thanks for thanks for sharing it yeah for those who are not watching a video we've got it perched here on a table shalina ayana thank you again for (laughs) gracing me with your presence (laughs) in the presence of a microphone and Mm -hmm. a few cameras Mm -hmm. The intention is to split this interview Mm -hmm. up into um, two parts, Mm -hmm. viewable on your channel and on mine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get it out there ASAP. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is is great timing for you. So thank you, my love. Mm -hmm. And until next time. Yeah. Thanks, babe. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you haven't seen the other half to this, I will do my best to link to the other part of it at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please like it, hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend. And if you want help with an anxious attachment style, or if you're showing up in relationship in an anxious way, chasing partners, check out Shalina's program, Freedom From Relationship Anxiety. And if you're a man who wants to learn the tools to have success and happiness in your long-term relationships, check out my program, The Conscious Relationship Council. We're changing lives over there, and it's a live program that launches September 14th, 2023. I'll leave a link down below. Okay, folks, all the best to you.